The Russian military's stunning inadequacies were clearly not a part of the plan. Russia's oligarchs, including members of Putin's own inner circle, hadn't been given advance notice to move their assets, which were quickly confiscated abroad. Russia had badly underestimated Ukraine's will to fight, and Putin's points of economic leverage against the West proved not nearly so potent as his advisers would have had him believe. As we write this, the war in Ukraine still wages on, and sparring a major reversal of somebody's fortunes, that'll still be the case by the time this episode is released. But to call it anything other than a catastrophe would be a bold-faced lie. Insofar as Russia's military failings, we've got to acknowledge here that that sort of ineptitude is nothing new. In Georgia in 2008, Russian forces were caught seriously unprepared to launch a successful invasion and managed to stumble their way into victory largely due to overwhelming numbers and a short geographic distance to cover before achieving victory. The issues that had been observed in Georgia and even Chechnya were left ignored or proved unfixable even until 2022. But that too is further indication that Putin's vaunted powers of calculation had been off in a major way. To not grasp the failings of the Russian military is unusual for Putin, who, if nothing else, has historically been very good at understanding the nature of his own position. He was punished ruthlessly for his overstep by the West, not just by sanctions, but by a constant flow of weapons and arms into Ukraine. Any nuance on Putin that had remained in terms of global public opinion has now all but vanished. That's not to say that every onlooker around the world dislikes what they see, but his place on the international stage has become profoundly more polarized. After the war in Ukraine became Putin's new status quo, he proved able to approach the challenge with the same shrewdness as he's done in the past. After much diplomatic and economic wrangling, Putin has been able to secure the cooperation of a number of relevant nations in enabling Russian exports to continue. Internally, he's been able to hold the Russian Ministry of Defense away from total collapse while weathering a mutiny from the paramilitary Wagner Group. On the world stage, he's shifted the goalposts, lowering Russian expectations of a total victory and laying the groundwork for a ceasefire agreement that would allow Russia to keep the token victories of captured Donbass and Crimea. And at the time of writing, that's where things sit. In the weeks that this episode was being written and produced, Putin's noose around Russia has continued to tighten. Longtime opposition leader Alexei Navalny disappeared for a stretch of weeks without explanation from a detention center where he's serving a 30-year sentence only to turn up at a brutal penal colony in the Arctic Circle. At the same time, Putin has begun back-channeling more forcefully toward a ceasefire agreement provided that its terms are amenable to Russia. And a former TV journalist named Yekaterina Dunsova, who had mulled a run against Putin in the upcoming 2024 cycle, was disqualified from candidacy on the basis of flaws in her candidacy application form, a move widely understood to ensure that Putin will not be challenged seriously in the coming election. And that election, when it inevitably falls in Putin's favor, will put him on track to begin a new six-year term. If he completes it, he will have ruled Russia longer than Joseph Stalin ruled the Soviet Union and longer than Tsar Nicholas II was Russia's reigning emperor. If Putin does finish that next term, he'll be in his late 70s. And with five terms completed, well, what's one more? And maybe another one after that? Now, as we conclude the episode today, we cast our gaze tentatively into the future in an attempt to glean just how Vladimir Putin's story will end. Of course, we do know one thing is going to end in his demise one way or the other and the long, slow fading away of the legacy that he leaves behind. But how that end will happen and when it will come is harder to say. First, the end of political Putin. It appears all but certain that Putin will be re-elected president in 2024, barring the not insignificant possibility that he might name his chosen successor acting president before then, just like Boris Yeltsin did for him. History in Putin's world tends to rhyme now as often as ever. But if and when he does step down, the question of who will replace him looms large. Nikolai Petrushev tops most lists. He's secretary of the Russian Security Council, and he's not only Putin's right-hand man, but a more extreme adherent to most of the same ideologies as Putin. Dmitry Medvedev is also a name widely in circulation, a known, predictable figure who's not exactly liked in Russia, but could be tolerated to return to the top job. There's also Alexei Diumin, a little-known regional governor who once served as Putin's bodyguard, but is known to still have a close relationship with the Russian leader. 